Hey guys, Jeremy from TACMED Australia. Uh, today you're going to do something different, do a um, small online um, lesson on the pulse oximeter. Uh, you know, I think it's one of the most misunderstood tools in the medic's toolbox. So I thought I'd give you a soldier's five on, uh, on the pulse oximeter. So what is a pulse oximeter? Um, it's a non-invasive medical device used to monitor percentage of oxygen bound to hemoglobin in a patient's arterial blood. And some of you are going to be thinking, what did he just say? But it's a, um, they come in a variety of different uh, devices. Uh, the, main, the main one we see on road as pre-hospital providers is the fingertip pulse oximeter. And uh, you would have seen a few photos of them on the first page. Um, the oxygen, everyone probably knows oxygen, we need that to survive. And hemoglobin is essentially your red, your red blood cells. They hold the oxygen uh, in your blood. So the oxygen in our body, it comes in two forms, uh, dissolved and bound to hemoglobin, our red blood cells. And it's mainly the ones that are bound to our hemoglobin, which we worry about in our pulse oximetry. So the indications, uh, we, we use pulse oximeters quite regularly, just about most, uh, most patients we um, treat, we use a pulse oximeter on. Um, but mainly the patients that we're worried about at, who are at risk of hypoxemia, so low concentration of oxygen in the blood, are the ones that we want to um, use our pulse oximeters on. So our asthmatics, our COPD patients, our major trauma patients, um, anybody with respiratory conditions. Uh, they're, they're the main ones that we use our pulse oximeters on. Contraindications, there's none really. It's a, uh, it's a non-invasive device. It just sits generally on your fingertip, but uh, can use them on your nose, tongue, lips, uh, earlobes, toes, but the main ones are, are the fingers. So it's quite safe to use in, uh, in all patients. So how does it work? Uh, a pulse ox, pulse oximeter, has uh, two, sometimes more with the mon ones, up to eight different uh, lights. They're red and infrared, light emitting diodes. So when you open it up, you can see uh, in the device that it has a red light. And it, uh, it pulsates at uh, hundreds, hundreds of times per second, and that's how it reads the, uh, the, the uh, oxygen on the hemoglobin. It also has a photo detector, and that's what senses the uh, the lights that are emitted from the device. So the lights emitted by the diodes at different wavelengths and absorbed by the tissues. Uh, the amount of absorption is analysed by the photo detector. Uh, it's then produced a. Uh, it's sort of calculated by the uh, by the pulse oximeter and displayed as a percentage, and that's our SpO two. Uh, oxygenated and deoxygenated hemoglobin absorb red and infrared light differently and that's why we have a number of different uh, lights, the red and infrared. So some of the limitations of the pulse oximeter, they don't like movement, especially your patients that are shivering and seizure patients. As I said before, the, uh, the light is admitted um, in hundreds of, uh, hundreds of emissions in per second. So it doesn't like any shivering or seizures. Uh, it doesn't like bright light. The photo detector is uh, quite sensitive. And uh, if you have bright light, uh, that's going to affect the, uh, the readings that you get. So poorly placed probes as well, if, you have the, if it's not on the finger correctly, uh, or if the finger's too big for the probe, or vice versa, if the finger's too small for the probe, um, they don't like that and they, uh, they won't read properly. Nail polish, depending on the nail polish, uh, will depend on if the uh, the pulse oximeter will work. Clear nail polish tends to work, but if it affects the uh, the red light, then uh, they generally don't like uh, nail polish. Uh, carbon dioxide is um, so the pulse oximeters they can't differentiate between oxyhemoglobin, so the oxygen attached to the hemoglobin, or carboxyhemoglobin, so when carbon dioxide is attached to the hemoglobin. Uh, it can't differentiate. So sometimes you'll get a reading that'll say 99%, uh, but really the patient is maybe in the 60% range uh, because of all that hemoglobin. The carbon dioxide uh, has a higher affinity to hemoglobin, so the uh, carbon dioxide will bump off oxygen 
to sit on the hemoglobin, um, and that's why you'll get a, a higher reading. Peripheral vasoconstriction, and we and we get that a lot of the time with uh, hypothermia. So if you don't have the blood in the uh, in your fingertips, then it's gonna uh, it's not gonna be able to read. Hypoperfusion. So we're looking at our shocked patients. So they have a decreased blood volume. Your uh, pulse oximeters can get a, uh, a false reading or not get a reading. And anemia. So do, if you have a deficiency of hemoglobin or a deficiency of red blood cells, then uh, that's also could affect your uh, your readings of pulse oximeters. So troubleshooting. What do we do if uh, if it's not working or if it's not getting a reading um, that that you think's right? We've got to remember this is a uh, it's a tool in our toolbox. Uh, you can't just gauge that one number. You've got to you look at your patient holistically. So if they're uh, if they're uh, they look quite uh, well perfused, got a good pulse, good blood pressure, their skin's a good colour, but it's showing at seventy six percent, then we think there may be an issue with the pulse oximeter and uh, and not our patient. So what do we do? Just check the probe placement. Just make sure it's on the finger to start with. Uh, make sure it's uh, on correctly, it's not, um, it's not sort of half hanging off. Make sure it's the right size. Uh, they, if their finger's too big, then it, uh, as I said, you're not going to get a good reading. Uh, if that's fine, then we check the cable. If you're using a non-fingertip uh, pulse oximeter, so the one with a the cord, then we just want to check the cable that it's not kinked or broken. Check the connection. Check that it's plugged in to the uh, to the machine. So we check the probe as well. You know, look inside. Is that red light working? If uh, if that red light's not on when you're looking in the device, then uh, the light emitting diodes uh, might be broken, or you might have a, a dead battery. Uh, you need to clean the probe. Oh, I wouldn't even like to think of how many uh, how many times some people, you know, most people clean the uh, clean the probes. I doubt it's after uh, every patient. I hope so, but I doubt it. But clean that, uh, clean that probe just to make sure the uh, photo detector is not dirty. Check the device on your finger. So obviously, your, uh, you know, generally if you're working, you're fit and healthy, and you are. Uh, so put your finger in the device. Check that it's working uh, properly on you. Um, and also, you can change the probe to another finger on the on the patient. So that's a uh, just a quick soldiers five on the pulse oximeter. Uh, if you want to get in contact with us, there's, uh, there's our details, tacmedaustralia.com.au. Thanks for listening.